Thanks for coming with us to the Clackamas River. I'm with my good friend Tom Larimer. My name's Tim Ray Jeff, and I think you should know a little bit about sink tip fishing. And literally, one of the things that's changed the way we fish for winter steelhead and any time we need to get the fly down is with Skagit heads. Airflow Skagit Compact, this bright green line hanging over my shoulder, literally is the most popular line and there's a bunch of key reasons why it works so well. And I thought I'd invite Tom, one of the key designers of this line, to kind of take you through the paces tell you what sizes it comes in, give you reasons why the line fish is well, and hopefully you'll pick up a couple tips and learn a little bit about our Skagit heads from Airflow. The Skagit Compact family goes all the way from 810 grains for your biggest rods all the way down to 360 uh, grains for your small rods. One of the things you'll notice this year, all of our shooting heads are now being packaged in a heavy duty Ziploc bag. And this does two things. One, it's a lot better for the environment because we don't have the spool that we're throwing away. But number two, these bags all integrate into our shooting head wallet. So it's a great way to keep all your shooting heads and any other tackle very organized. So a couple of features in the line. First, you'll notice that the loops on our shooting heads are all very, very heavy duty. They'll stand up to years of abuse. But the big thing to be aware of is that the black loop goes in the back. In other words, that connects to your shooting head. And that's very important for the taper of the line, but it also gives you a visual break between the shooting line and your shooting head. So when you're stripping in in low light, you can see what you're doing. On the front of the line, we have the color-coded system that all of you have come to know, but we have also gone to a, a, a printed version of this that now has what the line is and the line size. So all airflow fly lines are made out of polyurethane and we do this for a couple reasons. One, it's better for the environment. Number two, it's a much, much more durable material than, than traditional PVC. It's also inert to chemicals and, uh, you know, DEET and anything else that, you know, you might get on your fly line when you're fishing. So. Most of my lines, actually all of them, I have fished for as long as we've had them and I've never had one crack. They're extremely durable, they don't dry out, they feel as good casting day one as they do day 500. So in addition to your Skagit head, you're just going to simply loop on one of these sink tips in our 10 or 18 foot custom cuts, cut the tip to the size that works for your cast and your fishing conditions and you're good to go. I'd like to give you guys a few tips on casting the Skagit Compact. The first thing I want you to think about is just your setup. You know, on these lines, we're typically fishing a long sink tip, 10 to 12, even 15 feet long, and oftentimes with a big, heavy fly. So the biggest mistake you can make when you're fishing a big sunk fly like that is to lift too hard and too fast on the initial setup. As you do that, your rod tip goes way past you and you've got to oftentimes snap the rod back down to get everything in line and it ends up in a big bunch on the water. So instead, even though this is counterintuitive, think slow and easy to start your lift. Start your rod tip right at the water surface. Start making that lift as gentle and as smooth as you can. And I just hung on the bottom, let me do that again. Smooth and easy in the lift, then accelerate through. And if you've done this right, you're gonna end up with a nice straight line out here in front of you, and you're gonna use minimal effort to do it. And that's the most, I think, important thing. These lines were built to be easy. You don't have to use this big, hellacious setup. As long as you just make a nice, smooth lift, starting right at the water surface, it's gonna land right where you want it to. The next thing I want you to think about is the sweep of the rod through the D-loop. You know, many of us learned how to cast two-handed rods on a, on a longer line, like a 55 or a 65-foot head. These heads are considerably shorter. So one thing that will help you is to make a higher, flatter plane as you sweep. So once you've made your setup, think about making a distinct vertical lift up to about just past your head, maybe 45 degrees or just a little shy of that. As that rod tracks around, keep that rod on that nice flat plane, then sweep into the casting position. And a good way to sort of envision this is if you got this big ass sombrero, a 20 foot sombrero on your head. You're gonna lift to the edge of your sombrero and then track that sombrero. So I'm gonna make my vertical lift, come around, 
make my cast. So what this does is essentially give me more stick on the water. Where a lot of people start low and sweep high into their casting position, with a longer line, that's exactly what you want to do. But with a Skagit head, keep a little bit flatter, higher plane, and you're going to get more stick. So the last thing I want to tell you guys about is just using your bottom hand for your forward cast. And one of the most important elements of that is getting your rod back into the proper firing position. One of the big mistakes I see is when people stop, they oftentimes stop their rod a little too vertical. And by doing that, they feel like they have to push the rod down to get the rod to load. Make sure that rod gets back to about 1.30 on the clock face. So as you make that stroke, you've got a long stroke that allows you to load the rod through a, a really long, long stroke. That's what lets you use your bottom hand. So make your setup, nice flat plane, bring the rod back, use the bottom hand, and you're gonna get some great casts. So I'm going to show you guys how to mend a Skagit head, or any head for that matter, where you're using a running line. And this is one of the complaints, one of the biggest complaints of heads that I see out there. And for most people that are complaining about it, they probably aren't doing it right. So the first thing I want you to think about is when you make your cast, don't be afraid to drop your tip down at the end of your cast. That'll give you the maximum lift as you go to make your mend, as opposed to stopping that rod tip up high where your Skagit head lands, now you've got slack between the rod tip and the head. So by dropping that tip down, I can lift and I can really create slack out there, which is our goal when you're trying to get your fly to sink deep. We want to create some slack. The next thing I do is my mend is actually done with my bottom hand. It's not done with the top hand. And I'll do this in, in tight here at first. So as you've made your cast, you're going to lift and it's your bottom hand that's pushing that rod tip over. I always tell people, think about making an upside down L with your rod tip. And the bigger that L is, the more slack you're gonna create. So let's put it all together. Make your cast, drop your tip down. Lift to pull slack, make your men. That'll give you the control to create that slack out there, get the fly down, then engage your fly and start your swing. So if you're like me and you have time to fish an Airflow Skagit head, you'll know how important these are. They literally have revolutionized what we do out on the river. So thanks for your time and hope to see you on the water.